on the inside is to give God true worship. Because worship simply means to reverence Him. It means to respect Him. Many churches have no more reverence for God. That's why a lot of times it takes for the preacher that always pump the church up. So when you got the real Holy Ghost and you love the Lord, it shouldn't take for the man of God to stand up on top of a seat. I gotta be leaping over a pulpit. Because you stir up the gift that's already in you. Can you say you encourage yourself? Come on, pack yourself in the back and say, be encouraged, be encouraged. Many churches just got a religion, but not a relationship. Why well, think ignore the Holy Ghost? So you just got religion. You're going to serve a guy only on Sunday morning, I guess on Christmas, on Esau, on Thanksgiving. But once you got a relationship with God, you're serving God seven days a week. Am I talking right here, Mother Clark? Because it's holy. See, I like what you wrote up here. It said, holiness are hell. Someone said, holiness are hell. You see, it's holiness. Watch this. It's holiness that brings the anointing. It takes more than just fasting and praying. Fasting and praying is great. But what's the sense of fasting and praying, but we're not changing? Oh, happy Holy Ghost. I'm getting tired of talking about it's praying time. It's praying time. It's praying time. Yes, it's praying time. But honey, it's also changing times. It's also repenting time. This is my high five. It's repenting time. It's repenting time. If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray, seek my face and what? Someone said, turn from their wicked ways. This is my high five. It's time for restoration. It's time for restoration. If you want God to restore, then you must shop in the right store. Some of y'all going to the wrong store. I'm not talking about Macy's. Or... Some of y'all going to the wrong store. You better stay where God puts you at. For some of you churches, Lord have mercy. I, I never supposed to be dead churches like I see now. See, every church not like praise simple. The anointing is up in here, but Lord, Bishop Clark, some of these folk are hard to preach to. You ever saw folk, you keep preaching your heart out? <sighs> and they say, They say, you would take all that, and they drain you out. And they had you thinking that you're not anointed. You got to preach to yourself sometimes. Can you say amen? Am I talking right here, Cleve? You ever been to churches? And I got to pray for the worship leaders, too. I know y'all be having it hard, too. Come on, church. I get joy when I think about it. So they're like a bunch of statues. Because they ain't got no anointing. They ain't got no Holy Ghost. But when you got the Holy Ghost, God will give it joy. God will put a praise on the inside of your heart. I got a praise. I got a praise. And I got to get it out. Kiss my high five. I, I got to get out. I got to get out. Hold on, my son. I got your hand for the Holy Ghost. Say yeah. I'm almost done. David had a praise, Tara, that the devil didn't like. So the devil don't like about you, Bishop Clark. So you know how to praise the Lord. Yeah, yeah. See, I don't find too many pastors like this, leaping over seats. He's not just do, see, he's not doing it to impress folk. He's doing it because it's a real anointing. Some folk just do it just to impress folk. You can tell when somebody's showboating. Then you can tell when someone got the real thing. He got the real thing. Because do you not know, watch this. Every time you walk that seat, you know what you're doing? You're actually stopping the devil. See, body language also means a lot, too. Can you say amen to somebody? David had a praise that frightened the devil. But guess what? Even when David had favor in a hookah, David made a lot of mistakes, though. When David wrote the songs, read it again. Songs 51, what did he say here? Verse 12, read it again. The joy of your salvation. And uphold me with your what? At the time, the reason why David wrote this, because David just slept with Bathsheba. Am I talking right? He just sinned against God in the blood, but he slept with another man's wife. He was lusting after another man's wife while she was bathing. He said, Lord, 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 have mercy. She dark and lovely and not dark and ugly. Well, lust was already conceived in his heart. He wanted somebody that did not belong to him. 
So you know what he did, right? He had the husband killed so that he could have his wife. The devil is alive. So he thought he could hide this underneath the covers. You know how a lot of folks try to hide sin? Before they come to church, they throw the cigarette out first before they come to church. <laughs> They've been drinking corn liquor and Jack Daniels. I'm serving a God that delivered Daniel. Can you say amen? How the lions did. How many churches are trying to hide their sin? You can't cover up sin. You can't dress up sin. You can't put a tie on sin. You can't put no jerry curls on sin. You can't put no contact lenses on sin. You can't put, uh oh, help me, they're going to throw me out the church up in here today. A lot of these churches now got a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. And you know what power folk are denying? They're denying the love. Because the greatest power of all is love. And you ain't got no love, then you ain't got no Holy Ghost. You can eat them out of that, 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 all you want, but you ain't got no love, there ain't no Holy Ghost. It's a ghost, but it ain't the Holy Ghost. Casper got a better, better ghost than that. You know somebody got the Holy Ghost when they got the fruits of the Spirit. Not just a gift. It takes more than just a gift because gifts and callings of God comes without repentance. Romans chapter 11 verse number 29. But it takes having the fruits of the Spirit and the first fruit of the Spirit is love. Somebody say love. Love is a verb. It's an action. Say it again, Clee. Somebody say action. If you say you love it, then you must show it in your actions. What do you think somebody for getting divorced? Ain't no real love. Right? Anybody didn't get married for the right reason. Some just getting married because he has a nice bank account. Marriage now became a business now. You marry me, you pay me. <laughs> Everybody didn't get married to Jesus for the right reason either. Am I talking right, bishops? Some of them just got married to Jesus just to get from him. Oh, you oh, oh, didn't catch that in the spirit. Well, I know he can supply my needs. He can bless me financially. He can uh, give me a job. But after you got a job, after God bless you, now you don't forget all about the Lord. When Jesus healed ten lepers, what happened? Only one came back to give him glory. What happened to the rest of the lepers? See, the question is, how much do you really, really love the Lord? See, I'm not just, I don't just love him, honey. I'm in love. Come on, church. I'm in love. Because when you really, really love him, Jesus, even when I'm broke, I'm going to still give him praise. Lord, I'm going to still love you. Well, after they get know they get the Holy Ghost, they got a song that goes when the praises go up and the blessings come down. But guess what? I don't send the praises up just to get a blessing. I send the praises up because he's worthy. Y'all didn't catch that. Y'all didn't catch that. Y'all caught that? Am I talking right? Who? Some folks just send the praises up just to only get a blessing. Right? So that's it. <laughs> but so when you really are in love with God, you send praises up because he's worthy of your praise and because you really, really love him. That's going to be the test. Say amen to somebody. How many of you really are in love with Jesus? Are you in love with him? Are you in love with Jesus? Tell us, I'm in love with Jesus. Count your hand for the Holy I I know Bishop in love. Are you in love with Jesus? Can you say amen to somebody? So when you're in love with Jesus, you praise God in the laundry mat. You praise God in the beautician. Lord, please don't let her cut all my hair off. You praise God in the barber shops. Not just only in the church, because we are the church. God indwells in you. If any man be in Christ, he becomes a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become brand new. Oh, my Kaya, give somebody a hug and say, I'm brand new, I'm brand new. But certain folks, I'm almost done, I'll be done in five minutes. But certain people, you got to cut them off. Right? Didn't Bishop Claude, the Bible said, lay aside every, and every sin that's so beset you? Some of you got a lot of dead weight on you. Your friends are dead weight. Right? When you come to church, certain folk you can't even sit next to. Gotta get a sleep demon. <laughs> Time the choir was up, it was on. Time the word go for. So you know for that love, God, when they get excited about the words. Singing is great, but I love the word. Can you say amen to somebody? 
I got to have the words. That's why I got to have the word. Because the word of God is on swords. You can't fight the devil if you ain't got no words. Can you say amen? I just don't have it. But you have to live the word. They that preach the gospel must live the gospel. Spell the word preach. It's spelled what? P R E A C H. Now take the P off. Preach what you got. Reach. Take the R off. Reach what you got. Reach. That means the preacher is supposed to preach to reach each or heavenly Holy Ghost. <laughs> well, so I can't reach nobody if I ain't living what I preach. Oh, y'all don't want to keep me up in the air today. Can you say amen to somebody? Everybody ain't called the preacher.